Hello everyone, my name is Erica and I want to welcome you all to our new show. Currently, our show is unnamed. However, we are asking our viewers for their help with the naming. If you would like to participate in this new naming opportunity, please visit one of our social media pages to cast your vote. And with that, I would like to introduce our guest for today, Dr. Emily Waters, who is a bariatric and general surgeon here at GBMC. Dr. Waters, thank you for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. So, let's start off with the basics. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Like, what are some hobbies that you have outside of work? So, I am initially from Texas, so I'm, you know, way out of my zone here on the East Coast, but I, I've loved being in Maryland. Um, I Some of my hobbies, I love going to the gym. I love uh, lifting weights. I love the Peloton. Those are kind of my two favorite uh, outside work activities. I love to read a lot. Um, nothing exciting or deep, usually just some like, you know, young adult fiction, if I'm going to be honest, embarrassingly enough. <laughs> um, and I also like to travel a lot. So I travel often back to Texas, but I also like to travel internationally once or twice a year as well. Tell me why and how Dr. Emily Waters became a bariatric surgeon. Oh. So this was during my residency, during, in the middle of my residency, I did a rotation in bariatric surgery. And I just fell in love with the patient population. I fell in love with the surgeries. I just knew that's what I wanted to do with my life. And describe to me some of your experiences as a bariatric surgeon. You know, the best part about being a bariatric surgeon is that you really get to be with the patient during one of their more intimate parts of their life, I would say, because weight is so personal to a lot of us. Uh, so for example, yesterday I was seeing a patient for his final appointment before scheduling his surgery, and his wife was there too. Mm -hmm. And his wife had just undergone bariatric surgery with my partner, Dr. Friesen, in September, and was down 70 pounds. Oh, wow. So she was all excited that her husband was gonna get to go through the same experience, and so it's being there uh, with them and to partner with them to go through this. So it's just those kind of experience where you see patients before surgery and after surgery that that's the best part of the job. About how many surgeries do you perform each year? I'd say probably a little over 300. Okay. And that includes bariatrics, but also I do a bunch of hernias and gallbladders, take out appendixes, all kinds of fun stuff. And what are some steps a potential patient must take before getting their surgery? So the first thing you have to do is go to our website, gbmc.org slash weight loss, and that's where there's a start your journey now button. So you press that, you fill out a form, our office contacts you. So that's just the basics for getting into our program here. Mm -hmm. But there's other things that insurance requires. So you have to do about six months of nutrition visits. So one visit once a month with our nutritionist. Mm -hmm. You have to see your primary care physician and they have to say, yeah, we support you. Uh, and then you have to get ev evaluated by a therapist or psychologist just to make sure that everything's good for you to undergo bariatric surgery. Okay, so really a, a, a longer process, but it, it helps you in the end. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, I was talking to a patient yesterday, a new patient, and it's always a little disheartening when you hear the six months. It's like, I want this now. I'm yeah. ready to start. I finally made the, the leap to bariatric surgery, so let's do it. But really that six months is pretty key for, I think, people to get mentally accepting that their whole lifestyle is gonna change. It's not a quick fix. You're gonna have to make a lot of changes in your life. So I think that really builds you up to have the most success. And what um, is the actual success rate of having the surgery? So most people long-term, about 60 to 70% of people keep off their weight long-term. Okay. And in the first six months after bariatric surgery is really where you see like a dramatic weight loss. And then up to about a year and a half is where people will keep losing weight. And then that's kind of where they stay after a year and a half. But it has, it's the most sustainable weight loss tool that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and so bariatric surgery is very successful. And do you offer any post-operative support and resources for any of the patients? Yes, we do uh, have a Facebook group that's pretty active. Uh, our dietitians, Jana and Madison, they have uh, once a month Zoom support meetings uh, that myself and my partners try to join when we can. And then we do see our patients post-op um, one week, eight weeks, six months, and then every year after that. And so it's either me or the dietitians or the nurse practitioners. So we are very involved throughout the whole process. Okay. So it sounds like everyone has like a good support system after the surgery to, to make sure they're on the right track. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can't really do bariatric surgery alone or it's not recommended. It's not in a silo. It's not just the surgery. It's the whole thing. And can you tell me a little bit about um, robotic bariatric surgery? And would you consider this form of surgery better than um, traditional surgery? Oh, 
that's, that's my jam, the robot. <laughs> I love robotic surgery. So, um, so to answer that, is it better than traditional surgery? And traditional, you know, 99% of bariatric surgery is now what we call laparoscopic. So it's minimally invasive. So the robot is very similar in that it's the same number of incisions. It's small, small incisions. It's also minimally invasive. And really for bariatric surgery, the outcomes are the same, whether you do robotics or what we say the traditional way. Uh, so I don't want to, you know, say there's nothing wrong about doing laparoscopic bariatric surgery. Why I prefer the robot is it is a better visualization. It's a 3D camera versus a 2D camera. Uh, I can get in, a, um, I am in control of the whole thing. Whereas if you are operating traditionally, you have an assistant. All our assistants are great, our first assist. I just like to be in control of everything. So <laughs> when I'm doing robotics, I can be completely in control. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, you know, it's a newer technology. It's been around for like 10, 15 years, but it's still something that uh, is continuing to grow and to pave the way in surgery and in the future of surgery. So that's why I get so excited about it. There's a benefit in it in people whose BMIs are higher, probably like a BMI over 50, 55. Okay. Um, I do see the robot helps a lot. And last thing, what are some innovations that you see uh, coming into the world of bariatric surgery? I think the techniques for uh, bariatric surgery are going to continue to evolve and get better. There are a couple of um, different types of surgery that are still being investigated, so maybe different, uh, completely different types of surgery. But I think uh, in the world of bariatrics, what's really going to we're going to start seeing is more medications, which as a surgeon isn't the best thing. But if it's the best thing for patients, then that's the best thing. So we're already seeing some. Um, some medications that help with weight loss and for patients with diabetes. And I think we'll keep seeing those kinds of changes happen, which is honestly great. If a patient can lose weight without having to undergo surgery and that's the best for them, then that's what should happen. So I think that's what we're gonna see in the, in the future. All right, guys, well, you heard it here first. There'll be new innovations in the world of bariatric surgery. And I just wanna thank Dr. Waters again for coming today and being our guest. And I wanna thank you all for joining us today. Until next time. Have a great day.